Okay, the first thing we got for you is this. It says Appreciation Award presented by the Regency Oaks Resident Organization, November 2021, The Lyle Sands. Mm -hmm. okay. Ten years and six months since 2010. So God bless you. Okay. Keep on being 59. Okay. Holy right. Okay. And the second thing we have for you is a gift certificate, redeemable for two guests. So you can take somebody with you. For either enchanted evening, the guest dinners, wine pairing, gourmet dinner, and the instructions wow. and how to thank wow. you right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. God bless you, Lyle. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Okay. okay, now, today's a special day in that we have four great candidates that you're going to choose three of the four as board members because you're going to vote on Thursday and Friday, which is tomorrow and the day after. You pick up your ballots at the front desk. The ballot boxes are there. You vote for up to three or four, and you drop your ballots in the box. Only three. Up to three of four. Up to three of four. Okay? So, we're going to have each one of them is going to talk. They're going to talk in alphabetical order. I'd like to ask the candidates to talk from that microphone because we're having some mic challenge, so you wouldn't mind making the long walk down there and back. And we'll do it in alphabetical order. Andrea. By first name. <laughs> there you go, kid. You got it. All right. Okay. Some of me, let me start again. Some of you know me because I wrote about you in the Oaks. Doing these interviews is one of my favorite activities because I get to meet so many interesting people. Actually, I did interviews of all three of the other candidates, all three of these guys. And they're really quite interesting. I guess I should start by interviewing myself. I'll answer the questions I ask everybody else. So, I was born and raised in Chicago. I went to a small school in Downstate, Illinois. I did my graduate studies at the University of Wisconsin in history and at DePaul University in religious studies. My jobs were many and varied. For example, I worked for a typesetting company and then later for a small print shop. I made disposable diapers for Johnson & Johnson. I made costumes for community theater for many years. I sold real estate, but mainly I raised kids. I had three of my own and a part-time niece. And because of those, I now have four marvelous grandchildren. I was a scout leader, PTA president, stalwart volunteer. I met my husband, Tom, at my mother's funeral. We married in Williamsburg, and from there, we bounced around the world. I lost him to Parkinson's three years ago, and moved here two years ago. Since moving here, I have served as treasurer for the Residence Oaks, for the Regency Oaks Resident Employee Gift Fund, I'm sorry, the phone threw me, all right. A gift board treasurer, gift fund treasurer. I sit on the board of directors for Flight Group. I facilitate the Wednesday afternoon great courses programs, and I lead a writing group. Some of you may remember the Get Out the Vote program that Robin and I did for the 2020 election, or you might remember the short community spotlights that preceded Tuesday talks when we first came out of shutdown. I set those up and facilitated them. 
We all look at Regency Oaks through a different lens. And the great part of independent living here is that we can all find things that interest us. A wonderful staff feeds us, cleans up after us, and generally takes care of us. I think the purpose of the RORO, or the Residence Organization, is to represent all residents to the management and the management to all the residents. Communication is at the heart of that relationship. We have some great vehicles for communication. I wish Johanna was here because she needs to be applauded for the wonderful job she does with the Oaks. But only 60% of us get that. We have general meetings and they're attended by 50 to 75 people. Because of Tiffany, we do broadcast them on 7.32, when 7.32 and the Wi-Fi are working. <laughs> but rumor is still our main form of communication, <laughs> right? No one solution is ever going to be perfect. We can, however, use all the tools we have to try and find a way to feed the rumor mill accurate information. That would help. I hope you will allow me to represent you on the board. I promise to listen to you and to communicate your concerns. Together, we can make this community even stronger. Thank you. Okay. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chet James. My wife and I have lived here in Regency Oaks for a little over five years. Prior to that, we lived in a CCRC in Greenville, South Carolina for six and a half years. And while there, I was a chairman of the Building and Grounds Committee and on the Residence Advisory Council. We moved here for family reasons, okay? Uh, we really have enjoyed this place. Uh, for those of you who have detected that I have a Southern accent, I was a native Floridian, okay? So that's where I picked up my accent in the north part of Florida. Uh, what the activities that I've been involved in since I've been here, okay? And I'm a, if you want to know background committee of where I was born and all that sort of stuff, went to school fine and dandy, but I'm just going to focus on what I've been involved in since being here. Committee membership, I was on the Building and Grounds Committee. I'm currently on the Sales and Marketing Committee. I'm also a State Board of Representatives for FLICRA, okay? I've been an ambassador and still are. I'm a vocal chords member, a garden club charter member. I'm a bridge player of questionable <laughs> expertise. The task forces that I've been on here are the pool area upgrade, the elevator interior upgrade, and I'm a garden club charter member. Uh, accomplishments have largely been behind the scene, okay? Uh, I was solely responsible for reducing the original cost of glassing in your little eye. When we moved here, the cost was eighteen and a half thousand dollars. When we moved here, the cost of enclosing the glass on your little eye was eighteen and a half thousand dollars. Through a series of processes, we ended up signing a contract for, and got our lanai enclosed for $12,000. Some other people heard about that, and a couple of other people had their lanai enclosed also. Uh, then, uh, af after I had the lanai enclosed, Brant called me in the office and told me that after we moved out, we, he was going to take all the, all the glass out of the eye because he did not believe it was glass because of the price. Well, you can't put glass windows in a place like this and meet the building code. So we met the building code. And through a series of negotiations about specs and this sort of stuff, the price got lowered to eight to $12,000, $12,500. So any lanai that was built, and glass enclosed in the last 
three or four years has, has all been because of Chet Jane's working with management here to get the price right. The other one that I've done was also by myself, okay? When, when we got a new ownership, they went and changed all the signage. And the sign at the main entrance that told you where to go to what building and this sort of stuff was impossible to read. It was too small. Uh, I was frustrated that, about that, and I wrote a note to Mary Markey, I guess her name, who was Brant's <coughs> boss, okay, and said, tell me who was a vendor that put, did the signs and let me go to them and I'll get the signs remade if Brand will give me credit <laughs> on my monthly service fee. Oh. She did not like that, okay? <laughs> so I think she wanted, so basically an hour later, Brant and I were out looking at the sign and took some measurements and Brant had to recompose the words, but about six weeks later we had a new sign out there. So those are two accomplishments I think I've done but they've largely been behind the scenes, okay? Uh, the only other thing I would add is that uh, outside of this community, I'm a member of the Dunedin Community Chorus and also an usher of my local church, okay? Uh, I would like to see uh, Roro grow and, and have people involved, okay? And I sort of wrote up another little acronym for RORO. I would like it to be relevant, objective, reliable, and open. And that's what I would hope to accomplish if I'm on the board. And thank you very much. My name's Emilio Petty. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. I went to school to Collinwood high school with Calvin and uh, graduated there and later I was uh, drafted in the Marine Corps for two years during the Korean War. Then I went to college for four years and I was in a college of business where I took accounting my major and uh, econ was my minor. The last year I was at school I worked with a priest there, and I joined a club called the Newman Club. And I was a little older than most of the college kids, and so I, he was just out of the seminary, and we became good friends. And one time he said to me, why don't you open up a pizza place? I said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna get a job with Ernst and Young. I already been interviewed by them, and they got a job for me in Cleveland. Well, he said, well, why don't you make pizza? We could, we could use some money, our club could use some money. And it so happened that Tim Conway was one of the people who was in our club. And if you remember Tim Conway, he was on a Carol Burnett show, and he was in, uh, and he was really a funny guy, and he was always making jokes and doing things. So it ended up, we made, we made pizza, and my goodness, after a couple of months, we had lines of, with 100 people, 200 people, and we just couldn't do it because it was 25 cents a slice and a, and a Coca-Cola. And so I, so I just didn't know what to do, so I, I asked some other people to help me, and finally, uh, this priest said to me, you know, I think you're making a big mistake going to work. I think you should open up a restaurant. But I said, I have no money. He said, well, why don't you go talk to the bank that just opened up here, it was Mid-American Bank, and there's an Ashel Bryan there who's the president, so I went to see him. And uh, we had a nice talk, and he said, well, what are you, what are you going to be doing? I said, well, there's a place in, in um, downtown that's for sale. It's a Don and Helen's cafeteria. And I said that uh, uh, I would like to buy that. But he said, how much money do you need? I said, well, they're asking 9000 and I need a couple of thousand dollars to get started. And he, looked, and he said to me, well, how much collateral do you got? I said, I didn't have any. He said, well, you want the bank to put up the whole money? And I said, well, I've got a diploma and I've got the energy and I think we could make it a success. And he said, uh, he thought a minute and he said, well, would your parents co-sign the note? And I said, oh, I think they would. So you find out they can co-sign and if you co-sign, then I'll take it before the board for approval. 
So I had my folks co-sign, they did co-sign, and uh, to make a long story short, I ended up with a restaurant, and, uh, and we started back in 1957. 19, uh, the first year I was in business, it was absolutely phenomenal. My mother and my father, my brother, all came to, to Bowling Green, Ohio, and we, we worked in that restaurant as an Italian restaurant. We had pizza, one of the first pizzas in the area. Well, I can't tell you how much money we made, but I'll tell you, it was very, very successful. I was able to pay the note within a year. After three years, I bought another hotel, I mean, I bought another restaurant in Finley, Ohio, and uh, my brother ran that, and so consequently, that did very well. And then four years later, I bought a hotel and it was right next to Marathon Oil Company. And this hotel was built in 1840. Beautiful hotel, inside with a lot of card work and things of this nature. And uh, so we, we ended up buying the hotel and, uh, and running it. And so then we had, after that we had spent about two more, four more years and we built another, we bought another hotel and then we bought, uh, we've had, so at that point we had four hotels to run and then they, uh, these people built a, a convention center and the first year they were in business they lost $600,000. And they came to me and they said, could you run this convention center? I said, well, I don't know, but I'll try. So he said, you go ahead and do it, do whatever you have to do. And, and uh, so the first year I got about a debt and so from that, for the six years I was there, they made almost a million and a half. But anyway, I would like, I would like to uh, uh, say that, uh, that purchasing, purchasing all these hotels and all these restaurants gave me a certain type of experience. But I only owned to a couple of people. One are the people that worked for me. There was an old saying that a professor said, the professor said when I was in college, you're only going to be as good as the people that work for you. I have never forgotten that. And I had some wonderful people when they retired, they were 20, 20 years in, in service with, with me, 25 years. And we had nothing but a, like a family, even though there were hundreds of people working for me. I, I've never forgot what he, he said, that I always kept that in mind, being honest, be sincere in business and you'll succeed. Um, one of the things I also, in the community, I became president of the Chamber of Commerce, the board member of the New York, the Northwestern Ohio Restaurant Association. I was advisor for Mid-American Bank. Uh, I was a board member of the Toledo Opera Company. And uh, I also lectured many times at Bowling Green and Berry College and a couple other colleges, uh, they would ask me to come in and, and lecture on the on the business of business as far as hotels and restaurants were concerned. I spent over 40 years in the business. I would like to become uh, associated with the board here, and I think I can give some ideas as how we can get better. You know, it's like a ship. You have a ship, and the ship is owned by these people in Colorado. The captain, the captain is our executive manager, Brent. But we are the steam that makes it go. And if we don't put steam in there, they shut down. So we have a lot to say, and the board should have a lot to say as far as, as what, how you bring this place. I went to the meeting yesterday, and there were a lot of unhappy people. And so I think that we can do something about it. I think one of the things, the, the tavern, the tavern should oh, definitely open. Yes. They, they, all I need is two people. They can put Jeff there, and they have the cook, who's now a salad lady, put him back at the tavern, and we can order from Jeff. He puts the order in. When the order's ready, we can pick it up, because he, Brent said it was a problem of labor. Well, if you give me two people, I'll operate that place. But anyway, I look forward to representing you, and if you're kind enough, you'll vote for me. Thank you. Tony Quattromani, some of you know me. I do move around a lot. I, I like to meet people, and I like to talk to people. Um, 
I was born in East Providence, Rhode Island, and lived there until I graduated from college. I went to college at Northeastern University in uh, Boston, and my wife, I had met my wife, she was in nursing school in Rhode Island. We both graduated in 1961. That was a uh, big year. Some of you may remember, but I remember very, very well. On the 13th of August in 1961, the Russians put a wall up, or the East Germans, because of the Russians, put a wall up around Berlin. That became a big, important day to us. We, uh, we, got, we married, went immediately into the Army. I was ROTC. And after uh, two or three years at uh, either Fort Drum or, or Fort Dix, incidentally, I was a munitions officer, and my first explosion was uh, most of the depot at Fort Drum, Camp <laughs> Drum, went up. And I was, a young, I was a young first lieutenant when it went up. And I'll tell you, I met a lot of generals that day, <laughs> starting with the commanding general of the First Army, and all the way down to the first to uh, to a brigadier general. But the people had the biggest trouble with them were not the generals; they were the colonels who wanted to be generals. But that's another story. <laughs> so uh, we were assigned to Italy. My first tour. Can you imagine sending an Italian to Italy? <laughs> and halfway through Italy, we were reassigned to that place called Berlin. And that was a fascinating assignment. I was totally alone when I had three enlisted working for me. My boss was in free Germany, you know, East, West Germany. I was in Berlin. They couldn't get to me when I couldn't get to them without both of us knowing that we were going to meet. Uh, it, it was behind the iron, behind the, the wall. Someday, uh, if I ever get the gumption, I may give a talk about Berlin because it's fascinating. Anyway, after Berlin, went to Vietnamese language school, and I went to Vietnam, and we came back, and we, we hit all the, uh, most of the military army education system. Went to Aberdeen Proving Ground. See, where did we go after that? Oh, after that, I went to uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, Redstone Arsenal. Then I went to uh, Korea. Then I came back, and I had a fascinating tour. And some of you know this at West Point, where I taught mathematics to the cadets for three years. It was just an outstanding tour. Anyway, retired from the military, and went to work for small business and then large business. So after 23 years in the military, I had about 30 years in industry. And most of that was doing operations research, which was what my second degree was in, doing operations research and, and as a manager. I was a department manager for a big piece of uh, Northrop Grumman, and I had people all over the world. That was fascinating, and it taught me the value of, well, that and my background in the military taught me the value of planning. I've always been a planner, and plans fascinate me. But what fascinates me even more, and what most people don't realize, the day you go to execute the plan, it's already out of date, and you have to start all over again. <laughs> so to be a planner and to be an executor like these people on the board, you have to be agile. Agile. You have to react, you have to forecast and look ahead and react to what's going on. So anyway, uh, like I say, I was a planner. We started looking at continuing care retirement centers, CCRCs, oh, about uh, in the early 2000s. We visited, my wife and I visited over 20 CCRCs, and we stayed in probably four or five of them, and a couple of them twice. So I had a spreadsheet, you know, this big. <laughs> and, that, and that spreadsheet had all kinds of information on it. Some of it was cost, but it, was, it soon became apparent to me that costs were almost the same everywhere. You know, no matter where you go, you're going to pay the same, even now. And you're going to pay the same inflation, even now. But anyway, we picked this, <laughs> this one. My uh, experience on boards were varied. It started when we lived in, uh, in uh, Virginia, and we lived in a gated community of 3,700 homes. 
was big. It was a big operation. The budget, our budget there was almost as big as this. It was a big budget. It was run by seven-member board of governors who hired a manager to operate it. It's a little different. Here we have management, and they listen to the board, hopefully. There we had the board that told management what to do. They also listened to management, but they paid management. I was not on any committees there except one. I was on the finance, no, the fitness committee, FC, it's fine fitness in this case. And what I did, what we did in that committee, we worked for, oh, darn near five years to identify and justify a need for a fitness center, a new fitness center, and to develop the initial capital budget, capital projects budget. We ex it was executed by management for over $5 million. So I had a little part in that. My next tout with boards of governors was for the condo association. We still have that condo. It's in South Pasadena. We have 713 apartments. So that's 713 owners. Everybody had their own idea. There I started the uh, planning committee and it was intended, the purpose of the planning committee is to look beyond the budget and say, what do we need in the future? And how do we budget now and prepare? So what we developed, taking from my experience in the Army, a five-year planning program. So you had the budget year plus five more years, and that's what we developed. I think that's still working there. I was also on the board of directors, and I was the treasurer for one year. And our budget there was probably two, two and a half million dollars, plus a reserve of five million dollars. Then we came here. Like I say, we visited over 20 CCRCs and chose Regency Oaks. Someday, if you want, I'll tell you why. Uh, we arrived, my wife and I, about almost the same day that this place went on lockdown. <laughs> so our first experience living here was cocooned in our apartment, couldn't meet anybody, couldn't go anywhere, and they del delivered food. You've all been through that, but that's how we started here. And so every time something changed, to me it was a great improvement, and I saw value in it. <laughs> and we're almost back now. <clears throat> When we started, you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't do anything, you could go outside and walk around. So this is how I got busy in, in committees here. I started walking around every morning and I saw problems. Well, I didn't know anybody. I didn't even know we had a committee because I never saw anything. I knew one person, and that's Don Infante. So I called Don up and I said, we got a problem and the perimeter of this place is things that need to be fixed. And he says, well, go to the building committee. And I said, where's that? And he told me, and he, he sent my name to Don Hamilton over there. And before I knew it, I was on the building and grounds committee. And I'm still on the buildings and grounds committee, and it's, it's a good, good committee. Then I started to get interested in more in what was going on. And by then, I met Chris, Chris uh, Swanson, who's the committee chair for finance. I asked him about it, and he said, why don't you come join? So that's how I got on the Finance Committee. I've been on for over a year on each of those now. Uh, naturally, being a veteran, I'm, I'm busy and active in the Veterans Association. And some of you uh, who came to our last meeting a, couple of, a week or so ago uh, heard a very good speech by a dear friend of mine. Uh, other things that I've done, I'm, I'm active in the fitness center. You can see me there almost every morning or see me get a cup of coffee out in the breezeway on the way back, almost every morning. And uh, for great decisions, I gave a talk on two careers, which I thought was a pretty good talk, but there was one problem, and it leads me to something I would like to see happen here on the board, and one thing I want to work on. I had my briefing on a little power thumb drive. Most of you, some of you know what it is, but you plug it into the PC. Well, I plugged it into BC and it didn't work. So I had 60 people out here, three great screens, and a piece of paper this big. And that was my briefing. And that's how I gave my briefing, because I couldn't get anything to work. 
we have figured it out now, and I've had, I asked that software be put on that PC over there. It's there now, so thumb drives with PowerPoints will work. But that was quite an exper experience. <clears throat> Let's get on to the board. As you know, the board represents the residents to the management. The board listens, or should listen, it does. Listens to the needs of the people and the suggestions. Now, how does the board get those needs? Well, they can listen to meetings like this. But I think a lot of the information that needs to come from you, the residents, to us, if I'm fortunate, and to the board, is through daily contact. When you see someone, you have an idea, you should bring it up. And I'm going to talk about one or two of those ideas that I didn't come up with necessarily myself. I did from listening to people out there. So committees are important. And we need to improve our communications and let people know what the committees are. Yes, there's a bulletin board. I don't know how many of you have seen that bulletin board. There is one over there. And it gives you the, command, the committee structure. And it gives you the notes of the board. But do you know when the committees meet? I don't think so. I see a lot of black faces. <laughs> do you know what times it meet? So I think we need to publish that. And we do a good job on publishing a lot of things, but we need to improve the communications that way. Um, Brent spoke of it a couple of meetings ago, that we need to improve the technology that we have. Amen. We need a better phone system. We need a better way, of, instead of having to write down, two different people write down the activities for the day. We need a better system. We have our, our Regency Oaks newsletter with the, with the uh, calendar in there. That is fantastic. Has anybody used it? It is really good. You can focus in on what you want. But that only goes to the people that are PCs that can take advantage of that calendar. <coughs> Uh, now, this is something I picked up from people who are talking, and I sort of had a thought about this too, but I would like to see Regency Oaks develop more outdoor activities. And I think we on the board, if I'm on the board, need to promote that. And what kind of activities? Well, simple ones. Sims they don't cost a whole lot of money. How about croquet? Somebody says you have to have a, have a flat ground. Okay, it would be nicer in a flat ground. But I see right outside the, uh, the breezeway a beautiful place for croquet. Cornhole. Anybody know what? You, you all know what cornhole is. It's a little bag and you're trying to get in that little hole. What's it going to cost? A sheet of plywood and a couple of beanbags. <laughs> Horseshoes. I can't believe that the people we have here and nobody plays horseshoes. We should have a horseshoe pit out by the garden. Ah, noted. <laughs> See? Uh, there's other things. There's pickleball. That, that will cost some money, but that's pickleball. There are other things, too. And finally, I'd like to see uh, more lectures. Yes, we do have great decisions and uh, with the other great courses, and they were good. But uh, one of the, uh, actually several, of the uh, CCRCs we visited had contacts with OLLI. I don't know if you know what OLLI means, but it's the OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute. There's a multi-millionaire named OSHA, Dan OSHA or something OSHA. And he gives out money to seed money to start these OSHA, the Lifelong Learning. And uh, there's a big one here uh, at Eckerd College, quite a ways from here, it's 40 minutes from here. But still, it would be nice if we could have some of those elections here. So that's, that's something we could look at. Well, uh, vote for me will be appreciated. A vote for my opponents will also be appreciated. And I, I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. That's what I did before I came in here. I know you want to you want to keep it quiet so we can talk. OK. That was are, there, are there any? First of all, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Are there any questions of the four candidates? Yes, sir, Mike. Yes, I'll move around with the chair's permission so that they can see me. 
Because what I have to ask, I want to ask all four of the candidates. Let's add it to the board. Good looking, Tiffany, man. Are you all right yet? Yes. Okay. Right. Thank each and every one of you. I sat here and I listened to all four presentations. And I was impressed by every one of them, so I think you have made this a very difficult choice. I don't think we, the residents, can lose this year. Thank you very much. I do have some questions for you. How many of you have read the bylaws for the Regency Oaks Residents Association? You all hit basically on what the purpose of it is. The purpose of this organization is to represent the residents of Regency Oaks before the governing body of the provider, the provider being Regency Oaks, in accordance with the provisions of section 651.081. Do you know what they're referring to in that? State. Some people do. State statutes, yeah. 651.081. These are the two most important things that I think the board members have to be aware of what the purpose is for the people, and what the statutes say you can and can't do and how you have to do it. Mm -hmm. The one thing I want to mention right now in the statutes, this will affect all four of you, but it's for the purpose of all the residents here. An election creating residence council is valid if at least 40% of the total resident population participates. We have close to 480 residents here. That means close to 200 votes have to be cast for this election to be effective. We don't have 200 people here. So we have to make sure that the other residents know that this election is taking place. And then we have four very good candidates running this year to go on the board. Thank you very much. They're all super. But they're going to be elected by you. You can vote Thursday and Friday of this week. We're going to have ballots at the two front desks. So you pick up your ballot, you vote for up to three of the four, and you put your ballot in the box. Okay? And you encourage your neighbor to vote. Because yeah. yes. you... You are the active members of our community. You come to these meetings and you, and you listen. But a lot of people don't. So please get your neighbors out to vote also. Come down. Go to the front desk. Pick up your ballot. Vote. And put it in the box. Okay? So thank you. Yes, ma'am. I think that's too hard. People will not go to the front desk. There's, there's got to be a better way to distribute it so they get to everyone. I don't know how. Okay. But you I'd be glad. I'd be glad to talk to you. We have the procedure set up, and that's what we're going to do. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Could I vote twice or no. three times? No, ma'am. You can. How, how would you prevent me from? That's 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 being handled by the by the. Rosters at the front desk, they're going to give you one ballot, you vote one time for each okay. person. Okay. Okay. Done. Yes, ma'am. Done. Done. Yes, ma'am. Done. You might want to mention that you can pick up your spouses if, without her being there. Or, okay. Yeah. All right. We just did. Thank you. He repeated. Okay. okay. House ballots can be picked up at the front desk without the spouse being there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Yes, sir. Put, put the ballot boxes in the dining, dining rooms. No, no. The ballot no. boxes are at the front desk. That's where they're staying. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, All right. Ready. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Okay. Go vote, and that's enough on the ballots, but I'm going to ask Gene to say the same thing at the end of the meeting. <laughs> so you're going to have to hear it twice because it's important. I have a question. Yes, sir. What happens if uh, 40 per, the 40% uh, don't vote? Can have the mics? They don't get the vote. What happens? I guess we don't vote. That has never happened. I'm assuming it won't happen this year either. Good. Good. Um, the front 
the front desk is the place to do the voting because the front desk has the list of all of the residents in the building, be it north or south. When you go to the front desk, you give your name and they will highlight your name on their list. So you can't go back and get a second one because your name is already highlighted. If your spouse cannot attend or go down for some reason, you could get two ballots and they will highlight both your name and your spouse's name. You cannot go and get one for a friend. Okay? <laughs> if there's an issue that someone can't get there, I've already made plans with several people who cannot walk to get down there to get a ballot to them. So that is all being handled. Everyone here has the chance to vote if they will take the, the time to do that. Of the two days that we're voting, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, you can vote starting early tomorrow morning when the front desk opens, and you can go through the evening when there is someone still there at the front desk to give you the ballot. It will not really close until Friday night. The ballots are picked up Saturday morning, and there is a team that counts the ballots. Everything is done correctly. Um, it's Everyone is watched, you know, it's uh, no cheating can take place. There's a whole bunch of the board in there making sure that everything happens correctly. And then the ballots will, the, the winners will be posted as soon as it's over with. We we'll, we'll start at 10, so it'll take probably until noontime to go down to the area near the mailboxes where the names will be posted. Ma'am? Ma'am? Question down there. Excuse me, will there be a notice in the elevator? That's a good idea. Just vote. Yeah. To vote. That's a very yes. Who would put that in? <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> I can send something to you if, you if you need me to get to it and put it in all of the elevators. The ballot boxes will be very easy. In the south, they are, they are right when you come down off the elevator and you go to the front desk to get your ballot, the boxes are right there. They're the same boxes we use for uh, putting votes in um, back for the election. Mm -hmm. And in the north building, they'll be right beside the center elevator, right across from the desk. Question? Yes. Um, with all due respect, um, there are times where um, staff is not necessarily on the desk, and there are other people there, volunteers. But could you share with us what the they plans are for, for, the, for this, those types of? His things? question is when, when like the front desk head person is not there, what happens? Um, I have instructed all of the ones that fill in, you know, the day crew, the night crew, the ones that fill in for lunchtime. So everybody has instructions. Plus, there is also. A notice like this at the front desk which tells everybody what to do how to give out the ballot where they put it to give you a pencil if you forgot to bring one okay, just, so right anybody up. at the front desk I know they go on their lunch break or their dinner <coughs> break so you know we've been doing this <coughs> for what 30 years so <laughs> there's never been issues before I don't anticipate just issues trying to understand. again I'm just trying to understand that, that's fine Anybody else have a question? Okay. Okay, thank you. Vote Thursday and Friday. Balance it today. Yes, ma'am. Uh, who are the members of the board that are not going to uh, going to be replaced? Okay. I'm going to get to that when I talk, but I'll just tell oh, you okay. myself, Fred Green, and Gene. Okay, okay we're you. the three going off. And we have three new board members coming on. Okay. We've had four great candidates talk. Thank you. Okay? All right. Okay. I need to now switch to the, the meeting part <laughs> of, our, of our meeting. Got to have approval of the first, last quarter's meetings. So moved. So yeah, moved. It should be Second. A, an audience member, not a board. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Who, who would move? Who moves? I move Linda. 
Linda moves. Okay. Second. 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 In favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Now I have some statements that I want to make to you. Vote. <laughs> One. Thursday and Friday. Damn it, vote. <laughs> we got three members of four great candidates. Let's all get out and vote. First and second, thank you. Thank you to each one of you, okay, for being great, great residents. From myself, I know Fred's going to give you thank you during his talk, and Jean's going to give you thank you during hers. We're the three coming off. It's been a little tough with the COVID. Okay, it's been it's been tough maintaining continuity and stuff, but you've all been very very patient, and and I thank you for it. Uh, thank you for your understanding and support during COVID. COVID's been a tough time. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. We started, we closed, we started, we closed. Uh, so it's taken a lot of patience on your part. You know, and I want to thank you for it. I want to thank you for your patience and understanding during this personnel shortage that we have. This is not just the personnel shortage that we have here at Regency Oaks. It's a nationwide issue. And we're being impacted by it. Most of you have the patience to understand that. Brandt has a great plan. I think it will be solved by March of next year. So with the government subsidies coming to an end, hopefully by March of next year, we'll be up and operating back to normal. And I thank you for your understanding and patience. I want to give thanks to Brandon and his staff for their care during COVID. Whether you know it or not, they've made a lot of personal sacrifices on our behalf. So if you see a staff member and you see Brent, Thank them for it, because we're healthy because of what they did, and your cooperation. Uh, and I want to ask you to have a safe holiday. Yeah. Holiday safety is the last point I'm going to make to you this morning. Holidays are coming up. We're all in a rush. We all have a lot to do. Take your time. Be safe, and have a great holiday. Okay, with that, Fred, you want to pick up? Sure. I, I need, a I need a mic, don't you? Yep. You got one. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm Fred Green. I'm chairman of the Technology and Communications Committee. Um, the committee mission statement, our committee's mission is to recommend to management new options or improvements of existing technology and the communications equipment and systems that will enhance the residents' quality of life. Members of this committee are Fred Gardner, Bob Millett, Mike Murphy, George Shaheen, Nelson Toll, Lou Weislogel, and myself as chairman. The highlights, I'm going to report now on what we've done in the last quarter. The activities have centered around two areas. First of all, the continuing development of a bi-monthly educational program of interest to residents, with the next one scheduled for December 10th. This meeting, this meeting on December 10th will concentrate on access and use to the information contained in the Oaks directory and calendar. The speaker for this presentation will be the publisher of the Oaks, Mary Ellen Gardner. This will be followed by a question and answer period regarding the Oaks. This in turn will be followed by a bring your problem session. We've had that before and we have it at the end of all of our programs. Bring your problem and you'll be, be helped by volunteers who know a little about a lot of things and will try and help you with your own, your own problem. Bring your smartphone, your tablet, or 
your computer if you can carry it, and we'll try and help you at that time for a hands-on session with the volunteers. The second activity of the tech committee is the relocation of the computers in the compute from the computer center to the north and south libraries and the south lobby. This relocation is now complete. Unfortunately, the resource which we provided was not sufficiently used to justify to continue it. We hated to close the computer room, but we moved the computers so that they're closer to the residents. We have one in every computer in every lobby, and we have one in all in both libraries. In closing, I'd like to give some special recognition and thank you to the volunteers who help residents with their smartphone, their tablet, or their computer. Their names are Marilyn Gardner, Ed Heckman, Bill Henry, Margaret Henry, Hank Lashine, Mike Murphy, Nancy Murphy, Luz Weislogo, and me. And lastly, I'd like to thank for all thank all of you who helped me with my tasks over the last six years. I appreciate your help. It was my pleasure to work with you. Thank you. And I chair two committees. The first is the Health and Safety Committee. The mission statement of the Health and Safety Committee is to be aware of and note any situations and our actions within the Regency Oaks community that could impact the health, safety, comfort, and our quality of life of our fellow residents. We've had a very interesting year, and uh, I'd like to recognize Millie Diaz, Robin Graham, Susan Haverback, Karen Lee, John Myers, and Toby Sugar. Our staff resources were very important. Leslie Haas, the resident service director. Chris Sikowitz, the innovative home service administrator. And Maria Morse, wellness nurse. Unfortunately, two of our committee have left. They resigned because they left the community. And we had one member who passed away, Lois Thorne. She had been a member of Health and Safety for about eight or nine years. The third quarter accomplishments of the committee, it was very busy for Health and Safety. There were many questions as we continued to determine the new normal. Everyone was very careful as we learned what could be done in the new normal and built on the experiences. Leslie was a great asset and leader to these efforts. Recycling was suspended during the quarter following an OSHA inspection when the inspector objected to the placement of the collection containers had narrowed the entrance and exit routes into our buildings. Alternate locations have not been established for all recyclables to date. Re recycling continues for cardboard where alternate receipt locations were set up in both buildings. We also re, uh, continue the ongoing indoctrination of new residents into the community uh, with the uh, close coordination of Leslie Haas. Building and Grounds. The Building and Grounds Committee shall act as an advocacy group for all Regency Oaks residents in both independent living and the Regency Oaks Health Care Center that have site-wide common applicability to their residents. The Buildings and Grounds Committee, Tony Quattromoni, Gene Beagles, Don Graham, Ed Hawks, Chris Swanson, Joe Timmons, Mike White, uh, I myself as chairman, and Darwin, Darwin Perez as the maintenance director. And a special thank you to Corey Schultz. Corey Schultz is the owner of Sunshine Lawn Limited Liability Company, and he does a terrific job on the ground. Absolutely. Sure. 
I'm sorry he's not here to hear that. <laughs> the third quarter uh, was very busy for building and grounds. Problems hiring and retaining staff, plus rapidly increasing costs of labor, fuel, and many needed materials prevailed throughout the quarter. Repairs were made under emergency work orders and they were kept under control, but appliance repairs and replacements suffered as the manufacturers imposed delays as they tried to meet increased demand. We are finally seeing some modest improvement. A major accomplishment was getting the pool temperature determined and accepted by the various Regency Oaks user groups. And would you be, be surprised to hear that every now and then that a member of one of those groups comes and says, thank you for making it warm enough or cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> Regency Oaks Grounds received constant praise for their appearance. This year's rains at the right time have been very helpful to the overall appearance. We thank you. Very nice. I represent the Dining Services Committee. Our mission statement is Dining Service Committee acts as an advisory group representing all Regency Oaks independent living residents. We advocate a fine dining service which provides a variety of selections to please most residents. Taste in a friendly, attractive, comfortable dining room or more casual style dining in the Tavern in the Oaks when it's open. The members of the committee are myself as chairman, Bobby Belcher, Eddie James, Brenda Jones, Tammy Maurice, Emilio Petty, Linda Rudiger, Judy Sudebaker, and Walt, who passed away in October. I also would like to mention that our advisors the staff is Ricky Batch, that Ricky Batch, Ricky Bacher, how about that? Bill Sertz and Johnny Hubs. Our accomplishments for the year of 2021. We started opening up the dining rooms in the tavern in March after our close down. We did a new tavern menu and then the tavern closed. Dining under the stars at Ricky's house was in April. In August, we had to address problems with COVID-19 again. Had to deliver dinners at various times throughout the year. Uh, in October, October 15th, all employees required to be vaccinated. We lost most of the servers and we had to go to buffet style. Pop-up dinners on the breezeway to help crowding in the dining rooms. The pizza oven was up and working for a short time. Opened the brick and vine to sell a wine by the bottle and have special events. Now selling Boar's Head products at a reduced price from the North Hostess desk. The whole dining staff has worked very hard this year. Ricky, Phil, and Johnny worked very hard to feed us during difficult times. The price of food has gone way up. The availability of food and supplies is a challenge. And lack of servers has required a buffet. I would like to thank Ricky and the staff for all the hard work that they did during the year to keep us fed. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Robin Graham, Chairman of the Employee Gift Fund Committee. For those of you who are new, you should know that for 25 years or so, the Employee Gift Fund is the way, is the established way for us residents to financially show our gratitude to the associates of Regency Oaks, those we see and those we don't see thanking them for all they do for all of us every day to enable our lives here at Regency Oaks. The Employee Gift Fund is a group of dedicated resident volunteers who collect and account for your donations year-round and then distribute these donations among associates based on the hours that each associate has worked over the previous years. Committee members, in 2021, the members of your Employee Gift Fund Committee included Betty E. Gray, Judy Diver, Eleanor Finn, Norma Jean Infante, Andrea Hagner, Jim Kiefer, Carolyn Montgomery, Alice Quadramani, Ann Tanner, 
Sandy Ween, and myself. That may sound like a lot of people. A couple of those folks had to leave us, unfortunately, during the year, but they'll join us for our volunteer luncheon. <laughs> this diverse and talented group of residents shares a passion for the mission and brought new energy to the Employee Gift Fund program. It has been a great privilege to work with every one of you this year. Thank you. Our objectives this year, we focused on increasing the number of residents who choose to participate in the gift fund, keeping the gift fund relevant and visible for established residents while at the same time educating new residents about the gift fund and what it means to our employees and their families. You've enjoyed eye-catching gift fund lobby flyers, eloquent, creative Oaks articles, and informative newsletters. We created a logo and we adopted a slogan. We've reported progress and showcased associate stories, thanks to Andrea, Oops, sorry, about how the gift fund had benefited them and their families specifically. We supported the LCS Extraordinary Impressions Program and the Comment Card Program. We established a mailing campaign with the Health Center, which has produced several thousand dollars of unfound donations from the folks who don't live here but who spend some time in our health center. This has been, we're happy about that one. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and the gift fund has received generous contributions from the state sales, the bird fund, innovative home service, and others. And late breaking news just yesterday, we received a, a generous donation from the proceeds of the woodshop sale of Charles Patterson's estate, uh, which the family had directed to come to the gift fund. And we, we thank you for your thoughtfulness and your generosity. Our second objective for 2021 was to take advantage of modern technology to streamline and simplify the check computing and creation process for this and future gift fund committees. Unlike other committees, our year really starts in November. This is crunch time. So we'll work, you'll see in January, our next meeting, how, we, how we've done. I'm very happy it's progressing well and it's happening as we speak. For your Employee Gift Fund Committee, everything comes together now. We have less than two weeks remaining to accomplish uh, the receipt of your donations and to prepare to distribute them to the associates. Gifts Check Distribution is an eagerly anticipated annual event here at Regency Oaks, both for the associates and for the residents. This year, we scaled back the celebration with friends and family amid safety concerns, and committee members will distribute gift fund checks to associates throughout the day on Friday, December 3rd in the town hall. It'll be a festive, informal, friendly event with music, elves, refreshments, and more, specifically some, some lovely gift gifts of love that will be available to the, to the associates from Bill Hendry. And it's your donations that make it all possible. Heartfelt thanks to every single one of you and vote. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I am Judy Studebaker and I chair the Railroad Sales and Marketing Committee. Members of the committee are Bobby Belcher, Eleanor Finn, Chet James, Carolyn Montgomery, Ed Newton, Ann Siraj, and Perry Goodbar, Director of Sales and Marketing. Unfortunately, as you all know, Peggy Patterson is no longer on our committee. The mission statement of the Roro Sales and Marketing Committee is to contribute to maximizing Regency Oaks occupancy rate, utilizing the ambassador program to help achieve this goal. We are implementing a new program to assist pro prospects with trial stays. Peggy Patterson and her committee were able to upgrade the front porch of the South Building to make it more attractive to new prospects, as well as those of us who live here. We had an ambassador boot camp to discuss how to answer questions, such as, well, I want to move here, but which building should I move into? Oh, I live in the South Building. You must come to the South Building. It's the best. That is wrong. What you say is, both buildings are fine. 
We are one community. That's part of what we learned at the boot camp. The majority of the vacancies are Hamilton's and Franklin's, the two smallest departments. A model of each of these is having glass windows installed and upgraded bathrooms and kitchens in hopes more prospective residents will be motivated to purchase them. Pricing is now different for premium apartments and standard apartments. It is too soon to tell how this will impact sales. Some new residents are moving out because, quote, everything promised isn't materializing, unquote. One conclusion is people are unhappy with something or someone and will just not be satisfied here. Also, new residents waiting for glass windows or new appliances don't realize the supply chain problem. It takes at least 16 weeks to get glass lanai windows, and appliance vendors won't even give an approximate date for delivery. And that makes it very tough because I understand that when you move into an apartment, you want it like you want it and you want it right now, but the supply chain just doesn't work. The notebook given to new residents needs to be updated and that is in progress. The pet policy has been updated. Every resident with cats or dogs has to pay a, a deposit of $1,000 for each pet. The sales and marketing office now has a full staff. Hannah, who has a marketing degree, is a new marketing coordinator and is making a very large contribution now already. Move outs have slowed down since the first of the year, which is making a positive impact on occupancy. Housewarming parties are being held again. Although because of staffing problems, heavy hors d'oeuvres and drinks instead of full dinners are provided. It is hoped full dinners will eventually be possible again. In the past, contracts did not provide an end time for relinquishing apartments after being vacated by a resident. New contracts now have a provision that the apartment has to be relinqu relinquished to Regency Oaks by a certain time. All in all, with COVID affecting everything, I think the sales and marketing team has had a very positive effect this year. I'm Lou Weissel, chairperson of the Resident Activities Committee. Our purpose is to provide a variety of activities and programs to stimulate the minds, bodies, and spirits of the residents of Regency Oaks. <laughs> Our committee consists of Millie Diaz, Betty E. Gray, Mary Ann Gardner, Marion Green, Bill and Lorraine Mascadini, Rita Singer, Ann Turner, Adrian Turris, and Ruth Ann Wilsey. And of course, we couldn't do without Tiffany and Ginger. <clears throat> I'm pleased to report today that all programs and activities at Regency Oaks have returned to the pre-COVID virus. We are indebted to Tiffany and Ginger for their efforts in keeping things going during a very difficult time. We thank you. We're still having problems with touchdown. That's the operation that shows movies. Uh, it's a nationwide problem, and uh, we're working that, and we hope the system gets running up What's the magic word? Soon. <laughs> well, things are back to normal now. Please keep in mind that when the construction begins on the new town hall, there will be changes and inconveniences in scheduling programs, activities. So we ask for your understanding and to be patient. And as always, <clears throat> residents are encouraged to make suggestions for new programs and activities by contacting Tiffany or Ginger or any of the board members. While I have the microphone, may I say a word about the Weiss Local Committee? Please, sir. I'm also a chairperson of a committee called the Weiss Local Award Committee. And this weekend, you'll be receiving uh, information in your mailboxes. <clears throat> this was an award created to recognize residents for good work in our Regency Hall, Regency Hall community. Not to be confused with the award that the Roro Board gives out quarterly to residents for unsung hero type of reward. 
the award specifically states it is for sustained exemplary contributions to the quality of life of Regency Oaks residents. Uh, this award several years ago was created and named in honor of my late wife. And uh, you'll be receiving notification, uh, as I said, in the mailboxes this weekend um, to nominate people uh, for that award. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good morning. I'm Chris Swanson, uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee. And our mission statement was to monitor the revenues and expenditures for the operation of Regions of the Oaks, and that's very short. The members of my committee, uh, Bobby Belcher, Marie Bishop, Fred Green, Don Hamilton, Bill Moscadini, Ed Newton, Tony Quattromani, C.L. Wilmot, and Lou Weisslogel. And also our director is Sherry Schutzow. And I have to point out that when uh, Don pointed out that the uh, staff was working extra hard. Sherry does a lot of work from home, and also she we are sharing her with Bradenton. So it's one day a week she is going to Bradenton to, uh, to work with her because they have a vacancy. So she's spread thin, and to the members of my committee, we change our times, we change our location, we change the, the days because we have to fit it to Sherry's schedule as best we can. And that's the result of her being moved around a lot. Our objectives for this year was to conduct a monthly review of the financial re reports, and that's been accomplished. Present quarterly progress on goals. We've been doing that right now. And uh, review the financial audits. We're going to finally get the answers to our audit questions uh, coming up this uh, tomorrow. And. Uh, we scheduled the presentation for the monthly service fee for 2022, and I believe that was yesterday. <laughs> and uh, so that's completed. You might want to change that in the minutes, but I, okay. Doing it. And, re and we review and pri 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 prioritize the uh, Regency the Oaks 22 capital budget. Well, that goal was transferred to the full board at our last meeting, and this is no longer a financial committee mission. And then finally, we assist the Red Oak staff to reach goals set by LCS. And with all changes due to COVID, it's been difficult to measure our effect of our input. And we can go back to the committee members of about for this, that we've talked about turnover and employee retention for two years. And we've given a lot of suggestions on pay, bonuses, sign up bonuses, that type of thing. So some of those have been put into effect and, we are not sure if some were just too, too tough to do. And I want to follow up with uh, uh, Robin's comment about the, the, the toy sale we had yesterday. Uh, I want to thank you all for participating and running home with your Christmas treasures. But we raised $449 and, and that went to the employee gift fund from the sale of uh, Charles Patterson's uh, handiwork, so Amen. appreciate it. <laughs> and finally, this isn't an objective, but I want to say thank you to Don, Fred, and Jean for their volunteer work this past, some of you have been under six years, right? Seven. And it's been a lot, a lot of years, seven for Jean, okay. <laughs> but I want to say thank you for doing the, the job you did, the great job, mm -hmm. and uh, don't, don't be scared, so we want your input and continue. So I turn it back to you. I just want to say also that it's been a pleasure to serve on the board of directors. Um, I moved here seven years ago, and actually eight years ago. And within a couple of months, I was made um, the librarian in the North Library, which I dearly love. And the very next day, I got put on the board of directors because someone had left and moved up north. So I would served um, five years as the secretary and the other two years as a board member, um, being in charge of a committee and being on several committees here. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of de dedication, time that you have to put in and listen to everybody and try to get everybody's questions answered. Um, sometimes that's not always possible, but it's been a pleasure, 
and I thank you for allowing me to serve this song. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Any other comments? Gene, you got anything else? Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.